in our news tonight, have you tried communicating you know, with a speech and hearing impaired person? And how difficult or easy was it? Well, some hearing impaired students want sign language incorporated into school's curriculum due to challenges in communicating with the public. I was greeted with these signs on arrival at the secondary school for the deaf. It was my first time seeing the interpretation of figures in the sign language. Excited, I decided to take lessons in sign language from these hearing impaired students. I then engaged a girl and boy prefects on the state of their school's infrastructure. Thank you for coming. Thank you also. T E T E M While we're having this interview, we wanted to just get, you know, this student to talk to us in their own language, what they do really understand. But while doing this interview, we noticed that the headmaster of the school and the pupils here were having some sort of difficulty in understanding and communicating uh, with each other. And why is it so? Yeah, we have uh, the conventional type of sign language and we have the indigenous, indigenous uh, type of sign language. Okay. And so they all complement each other. Mm. And so when we are doing it, it's, um, uh, the sign language is about everything that you do to, for the child to understand. Why were they not getting you? Why are you not getting them quite clearly? M m maybe, I don't know whether um, I was uh, giving the right information or maybe they didn't understand me. In instances like this, when you're having problem with um, getting each other, what do you do? Yeah, the, uh, we have uh, paper sign uh, uh, interpreters in the school here, so we can call them. Ruth, the girl's prefect, told me it's always difficult communicating with abled persons. Communication with their parents is also a challenge and sometimes they are compelled to express themselves through writing. They can't talk with their parents. They are always quiet. But they refer their parents and need some help from them. A 2013 statistic from the deaf community of Ghana indicates more than 260,000 people in Ghana are hearing impaired. Lack of effective communication with the public is thus inhibiting their chances of integration. It is Ruth's desire that the sign language is introduced in the school's curriculum to enable basic communication with the speech and hearing impaired. Students and teachers at the secondary school for the deaf in the western region are worried about the imminent collapse of their dormitory blocks if prompt action is not taken. Now, the over 40-year-old dormitory block has developed cracks while multiple disabled students struggle to access other facilities in the school. The lapidated structure welcomes one into the Olin deaf school in the western region. Walls are deeply fractured. Dumb trees are exposed as louver blades are missing and mosquito proof nets giving way. There's a leakage through the roof of the building and that will make it break. The net, are, uh, there's a problem with the net also. Where the, the toilet facilities are broken. The gutters at the back of the building is also uh, broken off. So that is the problem, he sees it. Dining sessions are held in this uncompleted structure, a project abandoned since 2008. When I w came here, they were eating on the same block, the, the, the dormitory block, two apartments were set out for, for the dining. And then what happened was that uh, there was no, they were going in shifts, and so there were no elbow space for them. So he decided to use the block, which it is not completed. And they, the contractor has abandoned the, 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 the project since 2008 and it has not been finished now. So we are eating in the dust. Then notwithstanding, feeding grants for last time is yet to be paid by government. Currently, government is in arrears of about 115,000 cities. 
Due to the frequent delays in the payment of the grants, the school owes its food supplies over 140,000 cities. Utility bills are piling up and the electricity company has threatened to cut power supply to the school. The school says it spends more than 200 cities to fuel its generator during the load shedding. Compounding the situation, multiple disability students have to struggle to access facilities which are not disability friendly. This morning is on TV3 and let's continue with this one. Vice President